And yeah, we're just going to get started in silence for sure. <laughs> it seems like the right thing to do. It's really nice to give ourselves a little bit of space. Good, yeah, so here in your restorative bridge pose, just take a moment to really thoughtfully arrange your arms and your legs. Okay, ideally when you, when you find this shape, you don't feel any discomfort in the shoulders and the hips. Okay, at first you might have the soles of the feet on the floor with the knees pointing up. Mm. Good, but eventually it might make sense for you to stretch one of your legs out or maybe even both of your legs out. <sighs> Good, take a big breath in and just kind of allow yourself to feel full. And then a big, big breath out. And just repeating that, breathing in, big deep inhale. Exhaling all the way out. And the biggest inhale of the day maybe, and the longest exhale. Allowing yourself to just be here. It's you and your breath right now. Good. Really let your breath be big. Let your breath move your body. But let the rest of your muscles be nice and still, nice and heavy into the floor and into the bolster. And we're going to be here for just about another two or three minutes. <laughs> nice to not have anything to do if only for two or three minutes and really relishing this time just for you And through the month of May, I took a writing workshop with the poet David White, and it was all about um, all about the poetry of vulnerability um, and just capturing that with words. And I think that you know Brene Brown kind of said it best when she said, "Vulnerability sounds like truth and looks like courage." So for a moment here, you might bring your attention to your throat, and you swallow once or twice, rock your head side to side. And bring your attention right into the middle of your belly, your solar plexus. Yeah, good. And we'll just take another small set of deep breaths. Right. Bringing your attention to the sounds that you hear around you. Good. 
And to the sound of your own breathing, just five more deep breaths. Good, and then from here with your hips elevated on whatever you've got them on, your bolster, a block-like thing, just drop your knees into your chest while keeping your hips up. We're looking to give our lower backs a little bit of space here. Yeah, to give those spongy discs in the lumbar spine, those discs that get so much pressure <laughs> through all of our activities, right? Giving them a little bit of space. Awesome. Yeah, and then go ahead and set your feet down on the floor and we're just gonna take that thing out from underneath you. Slide it off to the side. Great, and then from here, bring your knees into your chest and rock along the length of your spine a couple of times and we're gonna come on up into a seat. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and as you find your seat, if you're gonna use the music this evening, just press play on the playlist. Okay, we'll get started. And I'm thinking about a little bit of work on our neck and shoulders for a couple of moments. You know that I've been carrying around some shit up there, so maybe you have been too. Okay, let's think about dropping the chin towards the chest, the ear to the shoulder, Good. And just really slowly and mindfully moving the head around here. Good. We really only get one neck. <laughs> so it's really nice to, A, know what's going on there, to be aware of if things feel tense or, or not, uh, but also to, um, to help relieve that tension. So then there's the awareness and then there's the action. Good. And then let's hold our left ear down towards our left shoulder and take your left hand up to the right side of your neck and just rub your fingers along the neck. Yeah, so left hand to the right side of the neck as you're stretching it. Every now and then I encounter like a knot back there. <laughs> so just giving yourself a little baby massage. Good, and then drop the chin back towards the chest and we'll bring the right ear over to the right shoulder. And just hover there for a second. Think about drawing that left shoulder down to create some more length here. And then bring your fingers up just to kind of look for any weird knots. You know, just grace the surface of the skin. Or maybe to press down a little bit harder if that feels good to you. Good, and then we'll release that right hand and drop the chin towards the chest and take your fingertips to the back of the neck and just slide the fingertips up and down the sides of the spine. Okay, from the base of the neck up to the base of the skull, back down again. Good, and then come on back up and we're gonna look up here. Point your chin nice and high. And it might feel good to rock the head side to side again, very, very gently. Good, and then we'll come back through to center, open up the arms nice and wide. Good, and let's wrap that right arm underneath the left and hug in on ourselves here. You might even walk your fingertips around your upper back. Good, and the gentle rock of the head from side to side, just to help kind of floss out that space in between the shoulder blades. Good, inhale, open those arms up again. Maybe the arms are long or cactus arms and we'll just hug to the other side. Good, as you walk your fingertips around, notice how things feel around your collarbones. Make sure they're not over crunched. <laughs> Good, and then a little rotation here of the head. Okay, chin towards the chest. Good, 
Good. And then from here, let's take our hands onto our lap, palms facing up. And we're going to take a few lion's breaths just to let, let stuff out, <laughs> right? To kind of build up our ferocity. So breathing in through the nose. As you exhale, stick out the tongue. A few more times. Inhale. Mm, good, and then let it go. <laughs> right, from here, let's interlace the hands behind the back, press the knuckles away from you, and kind of squeeze the shoulder blades in towards each other. And then if you feel comfy doing so, fold yourself forward. Your head might come down towards the floor, you might drop it way down to release through the back of the neck. If your shoulders are feeling grumpy here, it's okay to let those arms go. Good. All right, and then let's bring ourselves back up. Let's take the arms out in front just sort of press those palms forward and round the upper back. Good. And sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to uncross the legs and just kind of cross them the other way, the less comfortable way. <laughs> Good. And we'll do the same thing, but this time we're going to cross the fingers the other way too. So a little weird hand on top here. Okay, think about lifting through the heart, just for a moment, and then we'll fold ourselves forward, head to the floor, maybe the knuckles go up. Good. Just a moment here with your head, neck, and shoulders. Good, and then go ahead and release. Come on back up, hands onto the lap. Good, and then from here, I'm thinking about a little bit of this circular motion just to loosen things up in the lower back. So the hands on the knees, the chest sweeps down towards the lower legs and the shoulders move. Good. Trying to get rid of any stiffness or rigidity in the joints here. Yeah, maybe the head gets in on it too. Good, a few more in this direction. Good, and then sit up nice and tall. All right, we're gonna uncross those legs one more time and put them in the more comfortable position. <laughs> and then we're gonna take those circles and go in the other direction. Good. And as you go in the other direction, notice if the shoulders have become a little stiff or if your head and neck have become immobilized and see if you can bring a little bit of that like sweet uh, fluid movement up into that area too. Good. Three more. All right, as you bring yourself back up, let's take a little twist over to the left. Right hand on the left knee, left arm behind you. Good, come back through to the center and right on over to the other side. That left hand braces the outside of the right knee, the top of the right knee. I'm thinking about keeping both of your sitting bones really pressing into the floor, but twisting through your navel and up here. There's the crown bone. Good. Come back through to the center. And then we're going to come onto hands and knees. Good. And as you find your hands and knees, we're just going to. Um, we're just going to take a little bit of like a toe squat thing here on hands and knees. So tucking those toes underneath, let's shift the hips back towards the heels and then come back up onto hands and knees, moving slowly, really stretching the undersides of the toes. Good. And then we're going to take the tops of the feet to the floor and really round the back here. And let's send the wrist cage from side to side. 
Good, and then let's move through some good old cats and cows, dropping the belly, rounding the back. Good, and coming back through onto hands and knees with a neutral spine, your right hands down, reach the left arm up, and then we'll slide that left arm underneath. Okay, coming into your thread the needle here. Yeah, put the left side of your head down on the floor. Notice how things feel in between the shoulder blades. It might be nice to take your right hand down on top of the left, interlace the fingers, and kind of press the knuckles away just to get into that space at the back of the heart. Good, and then let's come on out of this by pressing the right hand into the floor, lifting that left arm up, big stretch across the collarbones, set that left hand down, and then let's shift it back into an actual toe squat here. So sending the hips back towards the heels, we'll tuck the toes underneath, and if you have your bolster item nearby, you might place it underneath your knees to create that little bench so that even your little toe sits on the floor. And we're going to do some standing balancing poses today. So really waking up our feet. It's kind of an important piece of that. Good. And as you're here, think about rounding the back, pressing your knuckles away. Good. Inhaling, lifting the heart again. Good. And then we'll even take a little twist in our toe squat. The right hand comes down to the outside of the left knee. And three deep breaths. Great, and then let's come on out of this. You can leave the bolster there if you want to. And just any kind of fluid movement of the spine, the hips, or the shoulders. There's no wrong way to move around here. Good, and if we're looking for anything, we're looking for kind of moving away from stiffness and rigidity. So see if you can just find some kind of fluid movement. Good, last couple breaths. Good, and then we'll hop back up into our little toe squat here. Good, yeah, and this will be our last toe squat, <laughs> so never fear, it's almost over. Interlace the fingers, press the knuckles forward around the upper back. Good, and then open up those arms nice and wide. Lift the heart. Good, and we'll take our twist over to the other side. Right hand braces the lower back, left hand to the outside of the right knee. Good, one more breath. All right, and then bring yourself back through to the center. Let's take the hands down to the floor, straight through those legs, standing forward, fold. Good, and it might be nice to rock lengthwise on the feet a couple of times, up onto the toes, back onto the heels. Spread those toes out really wide. Good, and then let the head drop down, and you might even tug at your own hair on the top of your head to relieve some scalp tension. Good, and breathe in, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold forward again. Okay, and then inhale to come all the way up. Reach those arms nice and high. Good, and I'm thinking of just a moment here in a standing camel, so your hands to your lower back. Think about pressing your hip points forward, rotting across those collarbones, and if you want to drop the head back, you can do that here. Good, and then we'll slowly and gently fold ourselves forward and step it back in a downward facing dog. Ah, a downward dog. 
good, pedal it out, whatever kind of down dog rituals you have, engage in them now. Maybe it's you rocking your heels side to side. Good, and then inhale, roll forward into high plank pose, thinking about that solar plexus area right above the navel, right below the breastbone, really lifting up. And then your inner thighs drawing in and up, heels back. Good, exhale back to downward facing dog again. And take a moment to really let that head drop down. Good. You might take another lion's breath here, breathing in calmly through the nose, exhaling to stick out your tongue. Yeah, good, big breath in. And come on forward, another high plank pose. And in this high plank, drop both of your heels over to the right so you're on the edges of your feet. Good, both of your hands could stay on the floor or you could reach that left arm up. Yeah, take your side plank. And maybe tuck your thumb underneath your fingers and then send that left arm out past your head. One big long line through the uh, yeah, left side of the body. Come on back through to the center. Good, lower on down to the floor. <laughs> As you find the floor, let's bring the arms alongside the body. Big toes come towards each other. We're just gonna lift up into locust pose. Good, and your locust, finding that you have broadness across the collarbones. Doesn't matter how high you lift, you just notice how this feels. Good, and then set yourself back down. Hands under your shoulders. Feel the floor under your palms and then tuck your toes underneath. And you might lift up through like a cobra or maybe you're pressing up through a strong plank and then back into your downward facing dog again. Yeah, nice. Awesome, as you find that down dog, drop your head. Again, loosen that tension in the jaw, maybe buzzing your lips. Lion's breath, and just sticking your tongue out. Good, and then inhale, roll forward into high plank. We'll take those heels over to the left this time, and both of your hands might stay connected, or you might decide to reach that right arm up towards the ceiling. Good, or the sky if you're outside, lucky you. <laughs> Good, tuck your thumb underneath your fingers, and then extend that right arm out past your head, nice and long, yeah. Feel the left hip lifting. And then bring yourself back through to the center. High plank. Good. Lower down to connect with the floor. Great. From here, press into the hands. Lift up the heart as high as you want to go. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Good. Yes, yeah, you let the head drop down. Notice how the shoulders are feeling. And think about really pressing into your index fingers here, spreading those fingers wide. Good, as you inhale, look in between the hands. And then exhale, the step walker hop on up to the top of the mat, whatever works for you. Good, breathe in, halfway lift, palms to shins. Yeah, exhale, forward fold. Great, inhale, come all the way up, reach nice and high. And let's grab a hold of elbows overhead, perhaps, if that's okay with you. And a gentle tip back with the upper body, lifting that heart. Good, and then swing those arms open. Fold yourself forward over two long legs. Good, inhale, halfway lift, palms to shins. Exhale, plant your palms and take it back to downward facing dog or to your high plank. Okay, maybe you wanna take your chaturanga and your upward dog cobra sort of thing on your way back to down dog. Maybe today is a day for some more restful practices for you. Just whatever works, yeah. Once you make it back to down dog, a few deep breaths. Good, maybe three or so. Okay, inhale, look in between those hands and then exhale, move your feet up to the hands any way you like. Inhale, halfway lift and swing those arms out alongside you. Press the fingertips back as the crown of the head reaches forward. Good, and then we're gonna take ourselves into chair pose. So bend those knees deeply, reach the arms up and overhead. 
Good. As you find the chair pose, drop the elbows down. Let's take the right elbow underneath the left and either hug around or eagle wrap those arms if you're a fan of that. Good. Just two breaths or so to really feel the strength of those legs. Great, and then fold yourself forward, interlacing the fingers behind you, pressing the knuckles up towards the ceiling. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, palms to shins. Exhale, plant your palms and step or walk it back to your down dog, to your high plane. Really anything that you need to do here to feel like you're balanced and in your body. I like to think about what's gonna make me feel the most capable. <laughs> Good. Nice. And another breath or two to just let that head hang heavy here. All right, as you inhale, look in between the hands. Exhale to walk or step or hop forward. Inhale, halfway lift, palms onto shins. Exhale, fold yourself forward here. Good. Breathe in. Come all the way up. Circle those arms around you. Lift high. Great. And then sit down low into your chair pose. Good. And in this chair pose, why don't we um, maybe rock forward onto your toes? Good. Yeah, as you rock onto the toes, feeling those nice strong arches. Good. And then we'll cross the other arm underneath. So I think it's maybe the left arm this time. Yeah. You can stand on your toes or drop your heels down if you prefer that. Good. And then go ahead and fold yourself forward. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Press those knuckles up and away. Yes. Good. Breathe in. Halfway lift. Palms onto shins. Exhale, plant your palms and step it, walk it, hop it back, anything that you need to do here. Good. Yeah, maybe focusing on some strength. Good. Yeah, head is heavy. All right, as you inhale, look in between the hands. Exhale, step, walk, or hop on up to the top. Breathe in, halfway lift, and this time reach your arms out past your head. Think about the crown of the head reaching forward and your chin drawing in towards the throat just to help support the neck. Great, swing the arms back alongside you, interlace the fingers, fold yourself forward over two long legs. Great, and then we're gonna inhale and sweep ourselves up into chair pose, sitting down nice and low. And um, I just wanna invite you to maybe sit down like a little lower than you're used to doing, or maybe you take your feet slightly wider and sit down low, or maybe you come up onto your toes, but just something to make this a little less um, safe and comfortable, I guess, is what I'm looking for. This is about challenging ourselves a little bit here. And kind of moving over the edge a touch. <laughs> Good. A few big breaths in and out. Nice, everyone. Great. And then go ahead and fold yourself forward over two long legs. Grab a hold of your elbows and let the upper body sway from side to side, like a little ragdoll pose here. Great, inhale, halfway lift, palms under your shins, and then exhale to bring yourself back into your high plank pose. Good, and as you find this high plank pose, let's lift that right foot up behind you. Yep, and then you might even consider thinking about picking up the left hand. So it's a real balancing act, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a, this is a tough one. <laughs> and then come on back to your high plank, which might feel like a good safe place. <laughs> and then go ahead and lower yourself down to the floor and make contact for a breath, right? A big breath in and a big breath out. Good, and then when you're ready, go ahead and move yourself through some kind of a back bend. So pressing into the hands, lifting up the heart. Good, take it on back into your downward facing dog. Nice. Great, a few deep breaths. Good. 
Right, as you inhale, look forward. Exhale, bring the feet on up to the top of the mat. Breathe in, lift halfway. Exhale, fold yourself forward. And this time, grab a hold of your big toes or wrap your hands around your calves for a couple of breaths, just finding space in the backs of the legs. Good. And then very slowly come all the way up into your chair pose and make this maybe the most awkward chair pose yet. <laughs> maybe you're leaning like way, way, way back into your heels and like, so, oh my gosh, am I going to fall back? Maybe you're bringing your hips to like parallelish with your knees. Yeah, nice. If the shoulders start to feel fatigued, bring the hands to the heart, kind of apply a little pressure there, lift the heart up. Good, a big inhale. And a big exhale, fold yourself forward. Grab a hold of those elbows. Good. As you inhale, halfway lift, palms to shins. Exhale, plant your palms down and step it back into your high plank. And we're going to go for that balancing act again, perhaps. So maybe lifting that left foot up. Okay, and see how that goes. And maybe the right hand starts to... Pick up and away from the floor. Yeah, one side might feel steadier than the other. <sighs> cool, one more breath if you got it. And then go ahead and set yourself down, hand and foot, and then your whole body to the floor. Just set yourself down. When you get there, a deep breath in. And a big breath out. Good, press into the hands, lift up the heart. And then take it on back into downward facing dog. Wonderful. Good. Three deep breaths right here. Good. As you inhale, look in between the hands. Exhale, walk, step, or hop to the top of the mat. Let's breathe and lift up halfway, palms onto the shins. Good. And as you lift up halfway, let's actually give ourselves like a little hip massage. So let's take our hands up to the sides of the glutes, right, onto the hips. Press your thumbs in, press your fingers in. Let's give yourself a moment here. Good, and then squeeze your thighs a little bit, pressing your fingertips into your IT band on the outer edge of the thighs, this thing that gets so tight. Good, come to your knees, give them a little rub, and then fold yourself forward again. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, and we're gonna step back into a downward facing dog from here. As you inhale, raise your right leg up and back. And then exhale to step your right foot in between your hands. But then we're going to walk the hands over to the left and straighten through that right leg, pointing the toes up. Yeah, good. Good. Think about maybe dropping your chest down here a little bit. All right, notice that left foot. And then your left hand to the floor, the right hand comes up. Good. When you are ready, bring that right hand down to the floor, just about in the middle of your feet. We're going to straighten both legs and reach the left fingertips up. Good. Another deep breath in. Exhale, drop that left hand down to the floor. Let's walk both hands around to the top of the mat and step that left foot in just a bit here. So, we're going to come into a pyramid pose. Good. Feet on two separate tracks. Your hands might be up on your bolster, blocks on the floor. And just fold yourself in over that right leg. Good. One more deep breath here. Good, and then step that left foot back in space just a little bit more. We're gonna keep that left hand down, reach the right arm up, take your big twist here. Good, step the right hand down, step it on back into three-legged dog, right leg high, and open through the hip. Point your right knee up. 
Good. Inhale, maybe coming into a three-legged plank. <laughs> Exhale, you might lower down. Drop both feet to the floor. And then downward dog, child's pose, whatever feels right here. Good. All right, and a few big breaths like that. Right, inhale, the left leg extends up and back behind you. As you exhale, step the left foot in between your hands at the top of the mat. But then we're gonna walk our hands around to the right, deeply bending that right knee and straightening out that left leg, pointing your toes up. Good, and for a moment or two, you might fold your upper body forward in this low half squat, maybe even like walking the hands out long or wide. And a few big breaths into the feet, in the hips. Good, with your right hand down, lift that left arm up, broaden across the collarbones. Yeah, Just a little bit of a twist here. Great, and then let's place that left hand down just about in the middle of the feet. Straighten out both legs, raise that right arm up, your twisted wide angle fold. Good, and here, think about keeping that left sitting bone kind of lifted. <laughs> awesome. Good, and then you can set that right hand down to the floor, walk them both around to the top of the mat, hop that right foot in just about halfway, looking for pyramid pose. Good, so this nice little hamstring stretch here, your chest in towards that left thigh. Good, one more deep breath here. Great. and then step that right foot back just a little bit more. Keep your right hand down and raise your left arm up towards the ceiling. Yeah, taking your twist. And think about really pressing back through that right heel, lifting the right knee and thigh. Great, and then let's take that left hand down to the floor and make your way through a flow if it suits you. Take your time in child's pose. Yeah, whatever feels best. Oh yeah, I forgot the three-legged situation. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Maybe we'll toss that in again later. That's right. <sighs> Good. Three big breaths. Good, and then from downward facing dog, raise your right leg up and back behind you. As you exhale, step that right foot in between your hands at the top of the mat. We're gonna do kind of a similar thing here. So walk your hands all the way around to the left. That left knee is gonna bend, that right leg is gonna be long with the toes pointing up. And this time, rather than folding forward, you might try to find a little bit of balance here, taking your hands up so that all your fingertips touch, holding this little like, Cave of your hands up in front of your heart. Good, this when you're in focus. Good, a couple more breaths. Feel your feet. Ooh. <laughs> Great, and then we'll take that left hand down to the floor, raise the right arm up, just relax, just for a breath or two. And then we'll set that right hand down on the floor. Take your wide angle twist again, reaching that left hand up. Your right hand can stay right underneath your face, or you might think about walking it over towards the left foot a little bit here. Yeah, but think about picking that right sitting bone up and moving it to the right a bit. Good, and then that left hand comes down to the floor. Let's walk both hands around to the top of the mat. 
Coming into our pyramid pose again. Good, and this time in your pyramid pose, it might be nice to grab a hold of your elbows behind your back as you fold forward. Looking for some balance. Good, as you inhale, lift up halfway. Keep your feet just as they are, and then that left hand can come down onto the floor, a block, a prop, whatever you've got. Right hand to the lower back or up towards the ceiling for your revolved triangle pose. Yeah, really press back into your left heel here. One more deep breath or two. Great, and then set that right hand down. We're gonna take the left foot back in space a little bit and come up into a high lunge here. And you can bring your hands to your hips. And a couple of options for a twist. You might take a prayer twist, left elbow to the right knee. You might take a tall twist or a little like reverse twist here. Your left hand reaches up, your right hand is on your left thigh. Good. And then let's come back through the center. Both arms lift up. And let's take the hands down to the floor in front of us. Lift that left leg high. Okay, open the left hip over the right. Right hand stays down. Left hand reaches up. Ardha Chandrasana half moon. Great. And as you come on out of this one, just soften that right knee, soften the left knee, step that left foot wide, and let's squat. <laughs> and as we squat, walk those elbows down the inner thighs, drop the head down perhaps. But yeah, if you feel better pressing to the palms, lifting the head up, that's great too. Just picking your favorite. All right, and then let's move on out of this squat. Maybe we're placing the palms down on the floor and stepping or hopping right back to your high plank. Maybe you're coming through a little flow. Maybe you're resting in your child's pose. Good. And last couple of them. Okay, and then from your downward facing dog, raise that left leg up and back behind you. As you exhale, step the left foot in between your hands at the top of the mat. Now let's walk the hands around to the right. Deeply bend that right knee, straighten out through that left leg. Great, and yeah, and maybe this is you finding some balance. <laughs> if your ankle will tolerate it, yeah, see what happens. <laughs> maybe two fingers are on the floor, some blocks. Maybe one hand to the floor, one hand to the heart. Yeah, you could do anything with your arms. Nice, everyone. Awesome. Great. Yeah, and then let's take that right hand to the floor, raise the left arm up. Yeah, broaden across those collarbones. Mm, and then let's bring that left hand down in the middle, straight through both legs. Reach the right arm up, your twisted standing wide angle. Mm, good. If you want to walk that left hand over to the right foot for a breath or two, that's a thought. <sighs> good. And then eventually go ahead and set that right hand down and walk your hands around to the top of the mat. Coming back into your pyramid pose here. Yeah, so the feet a little bit wide. If you want to clasp the elbows behind your back or even like work your hands into a reverse prayer, that's something you can consider. Nice. Nice, everyone.
Great, and then we're gonna take that right hand down to the floor, to the inside of the left foot, your left hand to the back, or reaching up towards the ceiling for your revolve triangle. Good. Okay, two more breaths. Right, and then go ahead and set that hand back down to the floor. And let's wiggle that right foot back in space to touch. And then we're going to sweep ourselves up into the high lunge with your hands at the hips for a moment. Really feel that steadiness and stability in the lower body. And then the twist of your choice, so maybe it's the same twist we did before with the hand to the floor, or maybe you want to take that tall twist or the prayer twist or that nice like long arm reverse twist. Good. And bring yourself back through to the center. Raise those arms up nice and high. And maybe you're even turning this into like a tiny little back bend just for a moment. Good. Before bringing both of your hands down to the floor to frame that left foot. Let's send the right leg up nice and high. Come into your half moon pose here. Lifting from the inside line of that right leg. Good. And feel the support as well from the left side of the rib cage. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, you'll know when you're done. <laughs> when you feel done, go ahead, soften that left knee, soften the right knee, set yourself down so that your feet are just about hip socket distance. And why don't we take a, a nice standing forward fold here, another Uttanasana. In this Uttanasana, you might step on your palms. Yeah, bring your hands under your feet. We have loads and loads and loads of pressure points in our wrist creases and um, in the soles of our feet. So this isn't just like a fun looking, you know, fancy party trick. This is like acupressure. <laughs> Let your head hang down here. And another big deep breath in through the nose here and a big, big exhale. Great, and then untuck your hands from underneath your feet. Press the palms down into the floor and take it back, maybe through a flow if you're feeling it uh, still or back into your downward facing dog. Good, but eventually we're all gonna meet in a child's pose with the knees kind of close, yeah. So that your belly can rest on your thighs here. That works in your body. If you prefer to have the knees wider, by all means, go ahead and do it. Good. And breathe deeply into the muscles of the middle of your back. Good. And then from here, we're going to slowly rise up to stand on our knees, taking our hands um, around to our lower back. You might tuck your toes underneath here. And another thing that I found that I like, too, is some padding under the knees or even a bolster under the knees. So coming into camel pose, broadening across the collarbones, dropping that head back. Good, if reaching back for your heels is the thing that you like to do, you're welcome to give it a go. Good, if you're still in your camel, come on out of it. We're going to take the tops of the feet to the floor and sit back on the heels here. And there are a number of things that you can do in this moment. <laughs> you can sit back on the heels just like that. If you feel like 
taking a little something underneath the knees to give you an additional stretch through the tops of the feet. That's a thought too. And I also want to offer up um, a Supta Virasana or a reclining hero's pose, which is where you kind of sit your hips down in between your heels, lift your pelvis and point your tailbone forward, and then maybe lower down onto your elbows or place a block or bolster behind you. Good. So we'll stay here for seven or eight breaths or so, whichever variation you've chosen. recline in this hero's pose, just start to bring yourself up slowly <laughs> and mindfully. And we're just going to come on out of this by crossing the ankles and coming to sit down. And let's extend that right leg out nice and long in front. Actually, I lied. Let's take it out to the side a little bit. <laughs> and I'm having a thought here, which is that you can take that left heel to the inside line of that right leg or in towards your groin, or you could take a half hero's pose here, tucking your left foot behind you. And then here's the, here's the fun part. <laughs> Picking up your hips, you might reach that right hand back for your left heel. Good, and extend that left arm out past your head. Maybe, maybe. And if that whole twisty shoulder thing doesn't work, you can just take your right hand to your right foot. Good. And just another breath or two like this. Good. And then we'll bring ourselves on out of it, <laughs> sitting up, unwinding those arms. If you took the left foot behind you, Bring it forward, and we're going to take the left hand down to the floor behind us. And now lift up, reaching that right arm nice and long, maybe the head drops back here. Good. Go ahead and set yourself down. Soles of the feet come together, knees drop wide, forward fold. Okay, let's breathe in and we'll sit up again and extend that left leg out nice and long into the side. Good, and you can choose to take this side stretch like this, or maybe you're tucking that right foot behind you, um, picking up those hips and reaching back for your right foot with your left hand. And then just turning your chest towards the front here, out and away from you, reaching that right arm up and over, maybe connecting with the foot or using your strap. And wherever you are, try to take some deep breaths. <laughs> Even if you're all twisted up. And from here, let's come on up and out of it. Unwind those arms. If you took the foot behind you, swing it back around. And let's take that right hand down to the floor. Reach the left arm up nice and high. Big stretch through the left side of the body. Good. And then we'll bring ourselves back down and just roll onto our backs. <laughs> ah, it's already time. <laughs> and as you come onto your back, the choice is yours, right? Any kind of intuitive movement that brings you to the ground. It might be you pulling your knees in towards your chest. 
You might want to take like a bridge pose, pressing your feet into the floor and lifting the hips, or even a wheel pose. We've done a lot with the shoulders today um, and with the belly. <laughs> Good. And just know that it's never too early to start Shavasana. <laughs> so if you're feeling it, if you're just ready to lay down, feel free to lay down. Good. If you want to take a couple of twists on your way there, that's a fact too. Good. So taking time to just ease into this still and restful state. In the beginning, as we ended with a little bit of stillness and ease in the physical body. Allowing yourself to be right here. And just for these next four minutes, stepping away from all the things that we have to do, that we want to do, just to give ourselves some space. these last 10 to 15 breaths here in Shavasana. I just want to invite you to maybe find a place somewhere in the middle of your body. Maybe it's your heart or maybe it's your belly, Good. your throat. Maybe it's your low belly, but just some place that feels like your center. And as you breathe in, imagine that you can breathe in through that place and extend that healing breath out into your limbs, out, up into your head. And as you exhale, this gentle release into the floor. Inhaling to take in that which you are looking for, right? That which you need. Exhaling to settle. Good. Inhaling in an idea, a thought, a word. Exhaling, body at ease. Your breath, your time. Yeah, 
Good, and starting to make some small movements with your own body. And take a nice big breath in through the nose, maybe out through the mouth. Good, bringing yourself maybe into a sideline position for a breath or two, kind of curled up in a little ball. <laughs> your head resting on your bicep. Good. And then from here, just take your time to come up into a nice, easygoing seated position. And maybe just for a moment, we'll stretch those arms out really wide, lift up the heart and touch. Feel the lower ribs pick up and away from the pelvis. And then let's take the hands together at the heart, maybe palms pressing together. Or you can just set your hands down. And let's drop the head down towards the hands of the heart, honoring this time you spent taking care of yourself and honoring each other too. Oh, yay. Thanks for being here tonight and such a beautiful evening. Yeah. I'll see you again soon. Oh, it's nice to see all your faces. And Patrice, your kids are so cute. I was waving, I was waving at them the whole time, like, hey. I love curious kids, it's the best. <laughs>